Thank you guys for coming today. Um, you definitely picked the better weather to fair time for today. Um, so we are super excited at the library to have Amy from the Grout Museum here. We've been having the Grout Museum quite a bit, but they do such an awesome job. Um, and let me tell you, she's brought some really cool little demonstrations for you. So I think you're gonna really like it. So let's go ahead and welcome Amy. So at the museum where I work, we do a bunch of different fun science experiments. So the one I brought for you guys today is actually a combination of a bunch of different shows. So we're going to be seeing a lot of different stuff. So the show we're going to start out with is called Kitchen Science. So these, yeah, Kitchen Science. So shh, we're going to need to listen. So for these, this is a lot of science experiments you could do in your kitchen with appliances or materials you might have there. But to help us understand some of the concept in kitchen science, we're going to need to talk about combustion. Now, who can tell me what the word combustion means? Yes. Fire. Fire, yes. Combustion is the chemical word for fire. So on this whiteboard right here, what shape do I have? Triangle. How many sides does the triangle have? Three, good. So for combustion, you need three things to start a fire. Who can give me an example of one? What's one thing you need to start a fire? Yes. A match. A match is a great, great, great example of heat. So you can get a match, a lighter, right? I could get the heat. Okay, you're fine. What I want everyone to do right now, put your hands together. Okay. Now rub them together as fast as you can. Go, 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 go. What do you feel? Heat. 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 Exactly. That is called friction. So if you get two sticks, rub them together, get the friction, you could get a spark going. Heat. What else besides heat do I need to get a fire going? Yes. Wood. Wood. Wood is a good example of fuel. Fuel is what actually burns during the fire. So wood get gasoline, wax, and a candle, right? Okay, one more thing. You guys are doing so good. What else do I need? Yes. Fire. Air, yes, oxygen. So you can find oxygen in the air. So now we got heat, fuel, oxygen, boom, you get a fire. So if you take away just one of these sides of the triangle, your fire is going to go out. So if I have a little tea candle, how could I take away the fuel of the fire? Shh. Yeah, what's your idea? I'm gonna need you behind. Exactly, very, very good. If that wax, eventually, is this wax gonna last forever? No, you guys kind of see that middle is starting to wear away. So if there's no more wax, we're taking away the fuel. Very, 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 very good. How can you take away the heat? of a fire. Um, yes? Um, yeah. More wood would be taking away the fuel. That's a good example of taking away the fuel. What about the heat? Yes, what's your idea? Blowing it, out. blowing it out. Very good. You know, birthday candles? Blow it out, taking away the heat. Water. Yes, very good. Water is another example. Okay, oxygen is a little bit trickier. So I'm going to show you guys this one. I'm just going to light this little candle here. OK. So we said there was oxygen in the air, right? So is there oxygen inside this little jar right here? No. Yes, it is. Is there air inside this jar? Yes. OK, so watch what happens if I put this jar over that candle. Okay, I'll show you it after. Okay, is do I still have a fire? No. No, did it go out? Yes. Why did it go out? Okay, sit down, please. Yes. So, when that candle, sit down, please. Thank you. When that candle was burning, it was using up that oxygen because it needs that oxygen for that fire. But once there wasn't any oxygen left in here, once that fire used it all, it went out because we lost that side of the triangle. So I'm going to show you guys another way 
you can put out a fire. Yes, you can use water, but we're going to do something a little bit more exciting. No. So we call this our homemade fire extinguisher, because remember, this is kitchen science. So something you might find in your kitchen is baking soda. Yeah, baking soda. So I'm going to put about five spoons of baking soda in here. Baking soda helps put out fire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do we think is in here? Water. It's not water. That's a good guess. Vinegar. vinegar. Yes, it's vinegar. So I'm going to put this up here so you guys can see. I'm going to pour about a cup in here. I'm just going to eyeball it. it yeah, it put it out. What's happening right in here? What do you see? It's bubbling, yes. So, it is, yes. So, when I mixed that baking soda and that vinegar together, it gave me a chemical reaction. So, did you guys watch closely? Did I pour the liquid out onto the fire? No, I didn't. So, one of these things this chemical reaction produced was carbon dioxide. So, that gas, it's heavier than air. So, when I poured that gas on that fire, it pushed that air, that oxygen, out of the way, and we took away that side of the triangle. So that is the homemade fire extinguisher. Have you guys ever seen the egg in a bottle trick? No. Yeah. yeah, some of you. Okay, well, instead of an egg, I brought a water balloon. Easier to travel with. So here, I've got a milk jug. Does my water balloon fit? No. No? What if I try it really hard? No. Am I going to pop it? Yeah. <gasps> So, do we think I'm going to be able to get it in there without popping it? Yes. Maybe. Maybe using some fire? I don't know. Should we try? Yes. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a regular piece of paper, set it on fire. <gasps> Boom. Got it in there. What is it? Is it popped? No, is it safe? Yes. yes. Okay. So, here's the deal. Raise your hand if you think my balloon, I don't even know the question yet. Put your hands down. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think my balloon was sucked into my milk jug. If it was sucked in there. Okay. Now raise your hand if you think it was pushed in there. Pushed. Yes, it was pushed in there because when that fire was in there, what was it eating up? Air. That oxygen. So it was eating up that oxygen. It created less pressure inside my jar. Now, pressure likes to be equal. So the pressure out here was greater than inside my jar. So air wanted to get in there so bad to equalize that pressure, it pushed down on my balloon so it could rush in and equalize it. I'm just going to leave it in there. No, I'm just going to leave it in there. I did all that work trying to get it in. It's found its home. Okay. So, another question for you. Raise your hands if you think hot air sinks. No. No. Okay, raise your hand if you think hot air rises. A lot of you. Should we do an experiment to test it out? See if we can figure it out? Okay. So here what I have used to be a bag of tea, and what I did is I just emptied it out, unfolded it, and if I set it up right here, just inside it is a column, oh, is just a column of air. Oh my gosh. It's wanting to fall over. Okay. No, oh, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. So, yeah, what? 
we notice? What happened? Hey, guys. It's great that you guys are excited about these experiments, but if we don't listen after, I'm not going to be able to get to all my stuff. And I really think you guys are going to like my finale. So we have to listen. Sound good? OK. So what happened to my bag of tea eventually as that air started to heat up? Yeah, what happened? It rose, right? Yes, we call this our tea rocket. So hot air rises. When you heat that air, it's going to become less dense. Those air molecules are going to spread out. So it's going to become lighter than the air around it, and it lifted. And then what happened to these ashes? They flew away. But they came back down, right? Yeah. I caught them. Yep, they're going around because cool air sinks. OK. So that was kitchen science. Do we want to move on to combustion? Yeah. Since we are already talking about combustion a little bit, yes? OK. First question for you guys. Does paper burn? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Kind of a simple question, right? Should I just double check? Yes. Yeah. Just to be safe. What do we think? It's not the tongs. Nope, the tongs are fine. OK, yes, paper burns. What's this that's left over? Ashes. Right, so what's paper made out of? Wood. Yes, exactly, very, very good. Paper is made out of wood, but it also has chalk and it has clay added to it. Now, that helps paper be nice and smooth, so you can write on it, you can print on it. So what I have here is a special type of paper. And I'll come here around in the front too so more people can see. So I have a special type of paper that has no chalk, no clay added to it. How do we think it's going to burn compared to my regular paper that you guys write on? It's not going to burn? It is going to burn? I don't know. Should we see? Do you see any ashes? No. no. Why aren't there any ashes? It did burn, but why are there no ashes? Shh, shh. Exactly. It doesn't have that chalk and clay. It's not going to have any ashes. It's going to burn faster. Very good. That was paper. So now, cotton. Does cotton burn? Yeah, should we see? Yeah. It does look like a marshmallow. So yes, cotton burns. I'm going to go ahead and put it out real quick. I heard someone say, Shh. I heard someone say it looks like a marshmallow. That is a great, great observation. And like a marshmallow, if I open this up, the inside of it is still going to be white. You guys know if you like burn a marshmallow, the inside is still going to be white and gooey, right? Yeah. For your s'more, yum. So why do we think the inside of my cotton ball didn't burn? Because it was in the inside. Because it, it was in the inside? Did I see a hand over here? What are you thinking? Because it was protected by the outside. It was protected by the outside? Yeah, good. So a cotton ball is pretty dense, right? Pretty compact since it's in that ball. Right? So the inside of my cotton ball wasn't getting enough oxygen. And we all know what happens when we take away one of these sides of a triangle, right? Yeah. There can't be enough fire. If there's no fire, it's not going to burn. So since that regular cotton ball wasn't getting enough oxygen, I brought a special type of cotton. And this has liquid oxygen added to it. So. How do we think this is going to burn? Faster? I don't know. Let's see. OK, look. You might want to look. Pretty quickly, right? It, it was like it, it, 
It was gone in the blink of an eye. So, since we were adding more of that oxygen, adding that side of the triangle, it burned so much faster. Now, can gases burn? Yes. Yeah. So, inside my balloon right here, I have a gas, HE. Who knows what HE stands for? Helium. Very, very good. Does helium burn? Is it flammable? No. I don't know. Should we see? Should we put a match to it? Okay. So, warning for both of these balloons, no matter what, when I put the match to it, it is going to pop. So, just a fair warning. I don't want anyone to get startled. I startle very easily. So, I feel your guys' pain. All right, let's see if helium. Was there a fire? No, so is helium flammable? No, it's not. What do you use helium for? Balloons? Balloons for a party, right? All right, guys, I'm going to need you to listen up. Otherwise, I'm not going to do the next one. Thank you. So why might it be smart to use helium at a party? For the balloons? If you have, like, candles or something, if that candle will get on that gas, it would still be safe because helium isn't flammable. Okay, H2. Who knows what H2 stands for? Oxygen. Uh, close. Hydrogen, yes. I heard someone say water. H2O is water, so hydrogen is part of water. Very, very good connection. What are our guesses? Yes. Yeah, you think it's flammable? I don't know. Should we test it out? Yes. yes. Okay, so now I have this liquid. What we're going to talk about real quick, how can I tell, what observations can I make if something is hot? What might you see? Yes. Um, you might see steam above. Steam, very, very good. Yeah, what, I, what else? Flames. Flames, good. Yeah, you in the back. Yes. Thermometer. You could stick a thermometer in it. Read the temperature. Good. One more. Yes. Water, very good. Okay, how can I tell if something's cold? What do you think? Okay, if you remember it, let me know. Yes. If you stick your hand in it, it feels cold. Very good. Yes. You can. Very, very good. What If water is really cold, what happens to it? Freezes into ice. Good. So, this liquid here, 
Do we think it's hot or cold? cold. Okay, raise your hand if you think it's hot. hot. Raise your hand if you think it's cold. It's I don't know. So, should I just put my hand in it? Yeah. No. Because if it's really hot or it's really cold, it could hurt me, right? Yeah. Right. So, how about instead of putting my hand in there, I use a rubber glove to represent my hand? Do we think that sounds like a better idea? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if this liquid is hot, what will happen to my glove? It'll burn. It'll melt, maybe. If it's cold, what'll happen? It'll freeze. Okay, let's see. I'm going to blow it up a little bit. Okay, what do we think now? It's freezing. It's freezing. Yes, my glove became more brittle. It froze, and then I cracked it. Does anyone know what this is called? Yes, liquid nitrogen. How cold do we think liquid nitrogen is? What's your guess? Negative? Close. It's very close. Yeah, what do you think? Negative 263. Negative 263. One more guess. You in the blue. What do you think? Okay. This, it boils at negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa. So, did you guys notice when I poured it in, it kind of bubbled? Right now, it's kind of bubbling that steam. Here, I'll pour in a little more so you guys can see it again. So you see the steam? You see it bubbling? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. The liquid itself is very, very, very cold. But our atmosphere, our air, compared to that is so hot that that's why it's boiling. But it itself is very cold. What's the coldest place on Earth? Antarctica. Antarctica, yes, very good. It can get to about mm, negative 128 degrees Fahrenheit there. So... This is colder than anything naturally occurring on Earth. It's even colder than Pluto. Whoa. Do you guys want to see something kind of cool that it can do? So, it's so cold that it will evaporate before it hits this ground. Whoa. You're fine. The gas is safe. You're fine. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Nope, back behind the line though, I'm not gonna do it. Whoa. Okay, nope, behind the line, take your seat please. So. Whoa. Do we think, thank you, all right, all right, I'm going to need you guys to listen up, otherwise I'm not going to do my finale, oh, that would be sad, I know, I want to do my finale, so, do we think this is poisonous? No. I don't know, should I try a cracker? Yeah, yeah? I'm kind of hungry. I'll just throw a cracker in here. Let's see. But I'm so hungry. Am I gonna freeze? I don't know. Let's see. Hmm? Okay. Not bad. Do I look okay? Yeah. Am I turning blue? No. I feel pretty okay. So, I think, I think it's safe. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah? It is. So, what is our air made out of? Oxygen. Good. That's what most people think out of. But, actually, 78% of our air is made out of nitrogen. So, liquid nitrogen is sometimes called liquid air. So, is our air safe? Is our air poisonous? 
No, yeah. So the second I put that cracker, can we listen, please? Thank you. The second I put that cracker in my mouth, my body heat converted that liquid nitrogen into the gas, which is all around us, right? So I was just eating a safe cracker. So I will take, you want one? I will take 10 volunteers to come get a cracker. Okay, here we go. In the 4th of July, yes. One, two in the black. Three, three. yeah, in the red. Four, five, six. I'm going to get some people in the back. Go into the front, please. In the orange, how many was that? Seven. In the purple, eight. You, in the blue shirt. Both of you, sure, yeah. I think that's enough. How many did I get? I forgot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Okay, cracker eaters, come here. Come here, come here. Gather around. I don't know. Yeah, maybe don't, okay. So, right now what I want you to do is lick your lips. Make sure that inside of your mouth, nice and wet. So, I'm gonna pop it in here, I'm gonna pop it in your mouth, turn around, face the audience, and shine. Are we ready? I'm gonna do two at a time because I can't let it be in here too long. <gasps> Who's ready? You wanna start? I'm scared, I'm scared. No, I, don't it's gonna hurt. Do it. I did it first, I proved to you, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> right. I was the test subject. Okay. All right. Here we go. There you go. Go, go, go. I will go down the line. You ready? There you go, pal. Go, go, go. Put it in your mouth. Okay, no, four on the line over here. Yep, you can. Thanks for coming up. There you go. There you go. Did I call on this thing before? What am I doing? What am I doing? There you go. Hey, do not, no. We are not going to touch my stuff up here. Thank you. I lost your cracker. What am I doing? You're making me go fishing for it. What? There you go. Okay, two more. Are you guys ready? Thank you for your patience. Do you, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. You want to do it? It'll just feel cold. You're safe. I promise. All right, pop it in. Go, go, go. Turn around. Face your friends. Face your friends. Ooh. No, I'm only doing that many. I don't have crackers for everyone. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Do you want to listen up? So, my friends, the last part of my show is from a demo called Creepy Crawlies. Ew! <laughs> what do we think I might have in here? A snake? Bugs? I don't know. Should we see? Yes. Are good if we listen 
to all the facts about my friend and we learn about Bart here, I will walk around with him. But we got to listen beforehand, okay? Does he have Sound like a deal? Does he, have a he is. He lives at my museum that I work at. So this here, we call him Bart. He is a ball python. Why might he be called a ball python? No. Ball. B-A-L-L. Not bald. Because he's curled. You guys see how he's curled up in a ball right now? They tend to do that. They are also sometimes called royal. They are also sometimes called royal pythons because rulers in Africa, where they are native to, were said to wear them as jewelry since they like to curl up. What do you guys think? Would Bart make a beautiful necklace? No. I sure think so. <gasps> no. No. Hurt his feelings? I think he would make a beautiful, beautiful necklace. So, so Bart here is about eight years old, still an adolescent. They typically live to about 25 years. What was our deal? If we listen, I'll walk around with him. So they typically live about 25 years, grow to about three to five feet long. Who can tell me something about snakes hearing? Can they hear? No. Yeah. Really? Can snakes hear? Yes. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think? Can they? You think they can? Uh, shh. I'm sorry. Okay, all snakes are deaf, so they can't hear right now. What he can do, though, is he can sense vibrations. And how can he hear and feel? Oh, because he could just feel the negative vibes. That's <laughs> so they can feel vibrations, so that's how they get a sense where their prey and things are. How do you think they smell? With their tongue. Very, very good, you guys. What they do, maybe when I'm walking around, he'll do it and you can see it. They flick out their forked tongue and they grab some of those air molecules to, like, taste. They have nostrils, but they use them to breathe, not smell. You guys know snakes shed, right? They get new scales. So they do that about three times a year, depending on their age and size. Bart actually just got done shedding last week. So he has all new scales for you. Who knows? Shh. Who knows how snakes eat? Do they chew up their prey? No, they swallow it whole. Very good. They can swallow anything whole that is as wide as the biggest part of them. So Bart here is about that wide. So he can swallow anything whole that's about that big. So we feed him. Yeah, we feed him mice. Very good. Okay. So. Since you guys were good, since you listened, I will walk around with him, and shh, you can pet him, but no, I need everyone to listen. This is important. I'm going to need everyone to, I'm not walking around with him until we're listening because this is important. Thank you. He is non-venomous, but... If he feels attacked, if a bunch of kids are grabbing at him, going at his head, he will bite. I don't want him to bite you guys. I don't want to get bitten, and I want Bart here to feel very safe. So we're going to stay away from his head. We're going to use two fingers to pet his body just for a second because there are a lot of you to get through, and we're not all going to grab at him at once. One person is going to pet him at a time. So if someone doesn't follow my rules, I'm putting him back because I want everyone to be safe. Got it? So, where, where are we staying away from? His head. How many fingers are we using? Two. Two. And how many people can touch Bart at a time? One. One. Good job. All right. It's petting time. Who's ready? You feel like you have? Maybe. Okay, quick pet. There are a lot of you. Nope, you don't have to if you don't want to. Good job. Okay, one pet. 